welcome to Policing TV. I'm delighted to be joined here by Professor Matt Bland, who is the Chief Operating Officer of the Society of Evidence-Based Policing, SEBP. Uh, welcome, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. We're, we're, we're here uh, primarily to talk about um, the fantastic event that uh, SEBP, uh, SEBP put on at the University of Cambridge just uh, a week or so ago. Um, but for, before we get into that, perhaps you could tell uh, us and Policing TV viewers something about SEBP, both UK and internationally. Yeah, sure. Um, so Society of Evidence-Based Policing is a, a UK charity. Um, it's existed for around 12 years now. It was formed by Alex Murray, who's now uh, director at the, the NCA, formerly Chief Constable of West Mercia. Um, ostensibly to promote the use of evidence-based decision making in policing, which is an idea which has existed for more than more than twenty years now, is you know, famously associated to Professor Larry Sherman uh, for, from Cambridge, but has, has gone much bigger than that in in, in academic and policing circles uh, now, and that that idea has caught on globally. So. While you've got lots of universities who are espousing the benefits of evidence-based decision-making, you've got lots of police agencies who are following up on that. There are also a number of chapters of the Society of Evidence-Based Policing uh, around the world now. They all fundamentally do the same thing, that they're all uh, by police officers and academics for police officers um, to try and give them the tools and, and promote the awareness of what is an evidence-based um, framework and, and how to apply it in practice. So I've referred to this fantastic event uh, in Cambridge just uh, a small number of days ago. Let's move on to that. Tell us about that uh, and indeed uh, how it uh, is a sister event associated with an event in Australia. Yeah, so uh, if really a big part of the, the SEVP mission uh, revolves around connecting people together, um, just getting them in, in the same space, sharing ideas, um, sharing contact information and sort of keeping the conversation going on, on the topics that matter to them. Uh, the conference is kind of the, the centerpiece of that. Um, so we have a, an annual conference every year. Most of the chapters do that. So there's well-established conferences in America, in Canada, and the, the global event you're referencing is the one that took place in Melbourne at the, um, the MCG uh, a couple of weeks before the event that we held in Cambridge um, a couple of weeks ago. Now, those events are all about sharing best practice through evidence based methods. So it's, you know, there's some rigor applied to selecting um, who the speakers are, but they're really about getting people who want to learn more about evidence based policing in the same venue and, and really sort of getting that conversation going. So whether whether you're in this part of the world or you're in another part of the world, the, the purpose is the same. And there's there's lots of join up between the the events that both we and our Australia and New Zealand colleagues both held. Um, so we had um, Simon Williams from the ANZ Society come over and speak at our conference. And our chair, Alex Murray, was over in Melbourne doing doing the same. The, the big standout piece from those two events collectively is that societies for evidence-based policing around the world have now signed a global memorandum of understanding to work together on, on different products and really sort of drive this evidence-based policing agenda forward um, in concert, if you like, across across the different chapters. So uh, Policing Insight, Policing TV, delighted to be uh, media partners for the uh, conference that was recently held in, in the UK. Uh, I, I was there. Thank you so much for the invite to attend. Uh, I've betrayed my own view already that it was just a fantastic conference. But how did you feel, I guess? Uh, I'm a sense of relief that it's all over uh, in one sense, um, because there's there's a lot of organisation that goes on behind the scenes. Um, but uh, I, I'm really delighted with how it went and i think the feedback that we've had and we're we're still undergoing our debrief exercises at the moment um but the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive which is good from a couple of perspectives one it's good for for us and we want to be associated with doing doing good things but it help it will help us um enormously in terms of replicating this um, this type of event in different forums so we're looking to hold regional events around the country 
Um, we're also looking at uh, sort of having online events as well. And some of those principles around just having things organized in a slick way will apply equally there. Um, I think um, the best takeaway from, from our point of view is the comments that people have passed about the quality of the speakers, uh, the, the idea, the range of ideas that they were able to hear about and their, their ability to um, connect with other people who, who perhaps weren't speaking but they've got they've got shared interests and they can help each other on, on that sort of journey to implementing more evidence based ideas. I have to say the venue is fantastic. Cambridge University is a, a wonderful place to host it, and in many ways the sort of spiritual home of of evidence based policing. So um, it was a it was a special evening to to have dinner there. But the the conference venue there is also uh, an excellent place to be, and we were lucky to have you know a number of people who are actively studying. Um, in this area, contributing and, and chatting to the people who are attending the conference. I just want to, before I come back to the speakers and the presentations, I just want to refer to the conference dinner. Wonderful, wonderful setting. Um, uh, and also the presentation that was uh, made to Alex Murray at the end of the dinner, which, uh, if you like, was the, the compliments to presentations that were made to two other key SEBP members. Uh, in Melbourne, just that couple of weeks earlier. Um, so, Alex, you've already mentioned the absolute, you know, the founder stalwart uh, in in the uh, SEBP um, field, and uh, so great opportunity there to, in Cambridge, acknowledge Alex's uh, contribution. Uh, any further remarks on that from you? Um, and then let's lead into your thoughts on the presentations and. Uh, Sure. Uh, th then we'll come back and say what's how they how how it's possible to to see this presentation. So uh, you know, SEBP is a, you know as I've mentioned is a charity and it's a, a voluntary organisation has been since its inception. Um, that's true of the other chapters around the world and you know it's quite it's quite special I think that you have um, an organ organisation like SEBP driven by people who are giving up their free time. These are, these are busy people who've got, you know, high levels of commitment to their demanding jobs, but they have kept this, kept this movement going and, you know, up, up to the point now where it's hiring um, members of staff like me to um, take it to the next phase of development. Um, so the, the Peel Award, um, which is dished out by Cambridge University every year was given to Alex to, his counterparts, Rene Mitchell in uh, the United States and David Cowan in Australia. I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it gives a sort of warm feeling, I think, to everybody who contributes to Society of Evidence-Based Policing chapters to see, to see them recognised. And I, I know from speaking to Alex, there is a level of discomfort that it's him getting the recognition and, and, and not these other people behind the scenes who are doing the work and and that's really sort of testament to Alex as a, a you know a leader and a person he um he recognizes that this is a, about a broad church of people who are working really hard to sort of advance this this cause for for no personal gain it's it's about you know it, it making a difference to the front line and and I think he, you know Alex's discomfort is is um misplaced because Everybody who's involved, and I know this is the same in Australia and in the US, will recognise that actually, although you've got a named person, that award is for, for more than more than one person. And, and you know, I think that's it's good to have that recognition and, and um, be able to sort of point to that. Um, the talks, you know, we we spend quite a bit of time debating who we're going to invite to, to talk. So we don't in um, the UK conference put out applications for people to put in, which is the, the normal sort of um, conference. We're quite selective about who we invite um, because we want to make sure there's a high level of value for our audience. And, and um, it's not being about control freaks. It's just about making sure that we, we can ensure that the, 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 the quality of the, the content is, is high and, and relevant to, to the people who are coming. I think we stuck the landing on that um, in, in, you know, I feel sort of vindicated in our selections this time because um, the feedback is, was pretty positive across the board for our speakers. They really sort of represent, uh, you know, a whole range of different contemporary policing problems and potential solutions from them. So all the way from uh, what's the latest that's going on, you know, across the world in Australia and New Zealand through to, 
initiatives here like right care right person um, and the home and it's listening to a home office about how they've they've evaluated that program and what the outputs of that are and then we mix that in with a blend of um practitioners uh, you know active serving police officers and staff from uk forces uh, who are getting their hands dirty with evidence-based policing uh, initiatives so Stu Gates from um, uh, Dorset um, I have to check because if I say the net force wrong you know with 101 different names in my head Stu will never forgive me but I'm, well, I'm pretty it's, certain it's, it, it's it, it, in a way it's 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 uh, onerous for you to uh, off the top of your head mention uh, any uh, of the the speakers and the presentations unless you mention them all but I think what I will uh, perhaps acknowledge here is that um, for those that are interested in viewing more of this fantastic content, uh, you've kindly given Police and TV permission to uh, publish or republish a handful, and all the available presentations will be um, there on the SEBP website. So we'll make sure that the details are available on the website. Um, just I want to bring us to a conclusion now, if we may. Um, and I'd, I'd like to give pretty much the last word, Matt, to you, which is um, an invitation from me to explain to those who are not yet members of the SEBP what, why they might join and how they go about joining. Uh, and um, then perhaps just also mention uh, the, the website um, uh, address. Uh, yes. We'll put it in the, the comments, as I say. Of course. Um, SEBP.police.uk is the, the address. Um, and that's where you go to to join. I should say up front, joining is free. There is there's no cost to it whatsoever. Um, what we're looking to do is build a, a community of um, people who want to know more about evidence based policing, want to get ideas about how they can um, use tried and tested projects to improve their own work. So we have got you know incredible um, scope of members from people who are um, out there on the front line doing the job. Um, right now through to um, people in universities who are just thinking deeply about research and really the primary um, reason to be a member of SEBP is to be part of that group to hear about the work that's going on across that community uh, and also then to take advantage of the the tools and resources that we will have available so things like um, the conference videos that um, we've been working with you on um, they will be available in full to our members, but we'll have other resources like toolkits and um, we have monthly newsletters that go out. Um, I've already mentioned the online um, sessions that we'll be doing as well that will be available to members. And we'll be um, moving into the world of sort of AI tools as well. So we're looking at um, chatbots that can uh, assist with people accessing research. All of that, you know, really exciting sort of new stuff, which is all aimed at sort of making evidence more accessible. Uh, more uh, user friendly and sort of moving away from this world where you have to sit down and consume a 30 page scientific paper. That's that's not really going to happen in 2024 and beyond. So we're, we're trying to make things uh, much more palatable for, for people to actually take it away and apply in their job. And that's that's the reason to be a member. And, and I, I, we're, we're trying to add value to to um, the policing profession at, at no cost to, to individuals and really encourage people to come along and join in. Do go and join if you're not already an SEBP member via sebp.plus.uk. And uh, for the time being, Matt, thank you so much for explaining more about SEBP and that fantastic conference just a few days ago. Uh, watching this uh, Policing TV viewers, do go and view some of that great content.